Okay, we're going to start our new unit. It's actually really short. It's just going to be a few quick lessons, but it's a really important unit. We need to talk about uh, geometry of angles. Now, I know you've done a lot of geometry in elementary school. The good news is you don't need a protractor or a ruler or anything like that for this. We're going to do it all algebraically, which sounds harder than it is. Um, we're just going to be looking at diagrams and taking some different rules and using those to figure out what the missing angles are. So we're going to walk through the basic rules first, and then I'm going to do some uh, slightly more complex examples so you can see how these rules apply. All right, so now these are called angle theorems. So in mathematics, a theorem is a rule that's always true because some rules, you know, they apply here, but they don't apply there. So the general idea of a theorem is a rule that is infallible. You can't break it. It's, it's always true. All right, so we're going to run through some of these different uh, angle theorems or angle rules, right? So the first one's called complementary angles, okay? And this one's pretty obvious to spot because whenever you're doing something that has complementary angles, it has a 90 degree angle. In it. So you, we usually have this little box drawn in the corner, right? Like here or here. So as soon as you see that, you know that's 90 degrees. I know you all already know that. But that means the two sides here, this one here, and this angle here, right, these two angles have to add to make 90 degrees. So no matter what they are, they have to add to make 90. And you could have more than two angles. You have three angles, right? Like we could have a W in here or something, a whole bunch of angles. All right, so they have to add to make 90. So in other words, when I say we're going to do it algebraically, well, we know this angle here is 60. So what's this angle going to be? And like I said, starting off right away, some of these are super obvious and simple. But it's looking for them when we get to the bigger questions and applying them, right? So how are we going to get x? Well, we're going to take 90 degrees, right? And we're going to subtract the 60 degree angle. And we end up with 30 degrees. So that's what x is right there, 30 degrees, because 30 plus 60 makes 90. Pretty simple, right? The next rule is probably the most important one. I mean, it's hard. There's a few that are very important, but this is one of them. This one you use all the time. And the reason why it's so important is a lot of people have trouble spotting it. When you make a half circle, right, a full circle is 360 degrees. Everyone knows, hopefully remembers that right from elementary school 360 for a full circle of rotation right well a half a circle adds to make 180 the problem is there's no half circles drawn it just like over here this is a quarter of a circle right if I rotated around a quarter of a circle right that would be 360 divided by 4 which is 90 degrees well what about a half circle right right here is a half circle now it's not drawn in for you right so this is the one you really need to look out for. And this is, I wish we were in class together because I could really go through more and more tons of examples with you over the course of a week or two. Um, this is the one that people have the hardest time spotting and usually takes a couple days in class. So essentially you can use this anytime you know you got a, a line that's intersected by another line like this, right? The two sides have to make 180. So for example, right here, right? I've got these two sides, they have to make 180. So I'm gonna, it's called supplementary an angles but when I'm doing examples, I'll just call it the half circle rule, right? Half a circle, right? So if this is 140, well, the other side, x, has to be 180. Take away that 140, and what's left over is 40 degrees. So this would be 40. Just to warn you, too, when you start doing the homework or any of this stuff, the diagrams aren't drawn to scale. A lot of them, I've just drawn a diagram, and then I've written some numbers in. Sometimes you might even think it's absolutely nuts, like it doesn't make any sense. Um, so don't trust how accurate the diagrams look. Trust your math, okay? All right, so keep an eye, again, can't stress this one enough. This is the one we really got to keep an eye on, okay? Supplementary angles, you're going to use this a ton. Um, sorry, all right, so this one here is the third rule we got is called opposite angles. So this one's a really simple one. Anytime you have angles that are across from each other when you have two lines that are intersecting will always be the same. So whatever this is, that is, and then same thing going this way, the x, you know, I'm labeled them both x and both y's because they're the same. So this is a pretty easy rule. Like, so if this is 141 here, right, the angle across from it also has to be 141. And then same thing, if this is 39 here, well, this angle here has to be 39, right? Now, there's a couple things we can also pull out of this. Obviously, all four of these angles have to add again to make 360 degrees of rotation. Also, um, you could use your supplementary angle rule here, the one we just talked about. So here's the thing. All these rules start overlapping each other. So when you start doing these, you might find that there's multiple ways to get to your answer. So for example, I could have just used the supplementary angle rule, half a circle, right? That's this rule over here, right? And said, look, here's a half a circle. 
These two have to make 180, so 180 minus 141 is 39 degrees. I could have done it that way, right? And said, all right, x is 39 degrees, instead of using the opposite angles. I could have done another supplementary angle here and said, hey, these two are half a circle. They have to make 180, so 180 minus 39 is 141, right? So a lot of these rules, just keep that in mind, they overlap each other. There are multiple ways, once we actually get into the real problems, this is just the setup, okay? Just showing you the very, very basics, okay? Once we really start solving these, it takes a few steps. And you can usually get to the answer in some of the questions by all kinds of different pathways or using different rules, okay? All right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, the next three rules we're gonna look at deal with triangles. Okay, now the first one's the most important, the interior angle sum rule. This rule says that no matter what triangle you're looking at, any triangle, all the angles inside every triangle always add up to make 180 degrees. So this is true, equilateral, isosceles, scaling, any triangle you can come up with, these three corners will always add to make 180, no matter what. All right, so down here, right, I got 60, I got 35, I got X. Okay, so to find out what the missing angle is, all I have to do, you know, take your calculator or whatever you like to do it, 180 minus 60 minus 35 degrees. Now, when you start doing the homework for these, please feel free to draw on the diagram. It helps a lot, okay? So do the work, draw on the diagram. Uh, all right, so we get uh, 85 degrees is the missing angle. Now, again, this is not drawn accurately. If you look at this, if we actually measured this, with a protractor, it wouldn't you know, actually add up to that. So we're doing everything algebraically. Don't trust the dimensions of the diagrams. They're not drawn to scale, okay? All right, so keep that one in mind. That's the most important one on this page, okay? The interior angle sum. Now the other two that still applies, they're still triangles, they still had to make 180 inside, but an isosceles triangle has an extra little feature. And remember, an isosceles triangle has two sides that have the same length, okay? So anytime you have an isosceles triangle, usually we put these little hash marks on it to say, okay, it's isosceles, right? Little dashes mean these are the set lengths that are the same. The angles that are across from them are always the same, not where they meet. So be careful, because we could rotate this triangle around. Like as soon as I draw it like this, and I go, okay, these two are the same. Which two corners are the same? Everyone has a hard time, right? It's this corner in this corner, it's not where they meet, it's the two opposite corners, okay, are the same. So in other words, if this is 20 degrees here, that means this corner here is also 20 degrees, so x is 20 degrees. I'm not sure why I put y over there, we're not finding lengths in these, but y would also be six centimeters, right? Don't worry, we're not doing any lengths, that's the only length I think we're gonna come across. Um, now, look, I could find the third corner up here, right? If I know two corners in any triangle, which I do, I could go, well, what's 180 minus the two corners I know, because there's 180 degrees in every triangle from that last rule we just learned, gives me 140. So this corner up here has to be 140 degrees. All right, so see how you can kind of use one rule and then go to the next rule. So when you really start doing the homework questions, usually you have to start filling out every angle in the shape to get to the angle you want. You can't usually do it in one step. All right, the last rule, so we covered interior, Isosceles triangles, equilateral triangle. Remember, equilateral triangle, all sides are equal length, okay? Now, if all sides are equal length, then all the angles are also equal. So every equi equilateral triangle, no matter what, all the angles, each one will be 180. Why is that? Because if you take, or sorry, one will be 60. Why is that? Because if you take 180 degrees, which is what the interior angles of every triangle are, that you add up to, and you divide it by the three angles, you'll always get 60. So this is, was a popular, this is always a popular exam and test question. I, this one, you know, when we're in class, normally I put this on a unit test and people always start putting their hands up saying, you made a mistake, there's no numbers on it. No, it's an equilateral triangle. So each corner inside is 60 degrees, right? So we know that. How did I know it's equilateral? Because again, these little hash marks tell me that these are the same lengths. Now, how are we gonna get X? X is on the outside. Right, x is in six degrees. So remember that supplementary angle rule from the previous page, that half circle rule? The half circle's not drawn in there, but anytime we have a straight line, right, cut by another straight line, the two sides have to make 180. So what's 180 minus 60, right? That's gonna give us 120 degrees. So x on the outside here is 120. All right, we're just gonna do three more rules in this lesson, and that's the end of this lesson. All right, so on this page, the first rule is quadrilateral rule. So just like the triangle, every triangle, every you know shape that has three sides, all the angles inside will always make 180. Well, a quadrilateral is any shape that has four sides, 
and the sum of its interior angles will always be 360 degrees no matter what so a square a rectangle anything any kind of parallelogram trapezoid doesn't matter if it has four sides the angles always add to make 360. So looking down here at this one, right, we got 110, 60, 80. So to get X, all I have to do is take 360 degrees and subtract the angles I know. I know 60, I know 110, I know 80, right? Subtract those all from 360. And we will actually get 110 degrees out for this. And it doesn't, again, this is not drawn very accurately, but it's just a coincidence that these two are the same. That's not always gonna be the case that the opposite angles are equal, right? Because look, this is 60, that's 80. Again, I just kind of put random numbers in here. All right, now that's it for the really important rules. There's two more rules here. To be honest, this next rule, I am not a big fan of. There's nothing wrong with it. It just tends to cause more confusion than it causes help. You don't need this rule. You can solve any question without this one. But there just happens to be a pattern that uh, th the outside angle here always equals the two opposite angles inside a triangle. It's a really specific rule for the, you know, the scenario. So I could really quickly find Z here by just going, all right, well, what's 34 plus 70, which is 112, right? So I could have just basically Z is these two angles, right? Added together, but I don't even need this rule. Okay. Now I'm showing it to you because you know, it's, it's in textbooks, it's around, but you could do it this way. Couldn't I just find the third angle in this triangle here? right, using what we already learned. Couldn't I just go, well, what's 180 minus 34 minus 78, right? Now this takes an extra step, but I'm just saying it's less rules to have to memorize, which is uh, 68 degrees, because a lot of times you have to find that angle anyways, right? So that's 68 degrees. And then I could just do the half circle, the supplementary angle rule, right? And just go, well, what's 180 minus 68 degrees? And we would still get 112. So Z here is 112 no matter what. Okay. All right. So that's a rule that sometimes I don't even teach it if we're in a rush because you don't really need it, but there it is. This next one's another one. We could, we can solve anything without it, but again, it can be a shortcut. So it's the sum of the exterior angles. So for anything, it's not just a triangle. Okay. The first example, I have a triangle, no matter how many sides. So the sum of the exterior angles of any shape, it says, it says quadrilateral. That's, that's not correct. I got to correct that there. Any polygon is what it really should say, right? There we go, wrong word there, my bad. Um, any number of sides, okay? The, the exterior angles, and it, it looks like a windmill pattern. So you have to have this windmill pattern. That's what we generally use, the short form for it, okay? We call it the windmill. Notice how, right, this angle, this angle, this angle, okay? They'll always add to be 360. So this one, plus this one, plus this one, plus this one, they always add to make 360. I very rarely use this one, but again, it's, it's one that you can get away with if you never learned it. You could still solve everything using all the other rules I gave you. It just might take you an extra second. So if we take 360 and minus all those angles, I think we get uh, 115 for Z. There you go. All right, so basically everything up to the quadrilateral rule is super important. These two guys, I'm just putting a little X behind, which doesn't mean they're useless. It just means they're not as useful as the other ones. Everything else you really got to know well and need to do. So I'm going to do a few quick examples, run through, um, showing you kind of what some homework or test questions would look like. All right, so sorry for the quality on some of these examples. This is basically some like hand-drawn ones I had done, and then I photocopied them. Now I've scanned a photocopy back in the computer because I didn't have an original digital copy, so... We'll do the best we can, but this would have been kind of like your first homework on these kind of lessons, all right? So now you may think, I'll solve it one way, and you might even think of a different way to do it, and there is more than one way, right, for a lot of these. All right, so the first thing is, what do we know about this? Well, I know this is a 90 degree angle, right? So remember our opposite angle theorem, angles that are across from each other the same? So Y is also 90, that's the first thing that stands out to me. Now what else could I do here? Well, this whole side has to make 180, right, or, I could even say this side here has to make 90 because it's a quarter of a circle because if this side's 90, right? So that means X has to be 40 because 40 plus 50 make 90, right? And then the whole side here, 90 plus 50 plus 40 make 180. So it's a half circle, right? All right, now what else could we say? Well, X is across from W. So W also has to be 40 degrees. So there's another angle we found. And Z is across from 50 right? So opposite angle theorem. So it also has to be 50. Now we could double check if we did this correctly because all of these angles here 
make a complete circle. So they all have to add up to be 360. So if they do, we're probably in good shape. All right, this next one here, it's hard to read the number. So we're gonna say, I think this is a 40 degrees and this is a 45 degrees. So we've got an X down here and a 50 here. All right, so we're trying to solve for X. Now, we basically got a triangle up top with one, two, three angles, right? So take 180, because that's how many degrees are inside a triangle and subtract the two angles you know I know 40 and I know 45 which leaves us with 95 degrees so this corner here is 95 and the angle across from it the opposite angle is also 95 so look you can't and this is the the lesson to learn when you do these you can't just find the X in one step okay so or the Y or whatever you're gonna have to start solving for lots of different angles so the secret is because when students get frustrated they say well I don't even know where to start just start filling in every single angle you can find okay now I'm gonna fill in even some useless ones like I don't need this angle but look here's a half circle right couldn't I go 180 minus 95 180 minus 95 is 85 right and this angles across from this is also 85 now I don't need those angles but I'm just showing how you know when you're desperate you just start kind of filling in every corner you can find all right at the bottom we got another triangle with one two three angles so to figure out what x is we're gonna go well what's 180 minus 95 minus 50 and what's left that's gonna give us that and we get uh, 35 degrees oops there we go so x is 35 so again start filling out everything and when you do your homework this is basically all I want to see is just do the rough work right on the page kind of like this it's kind of hard to do a neat job I just want to see that you've made some effort finding some of the numbers right so do what I'm doing. See, I'm drawing on the page to find what I need, just like a puzzle. Just fill in everything you need to fill in, everything you think you can find, okay? All right, let's go to the next one. This one's a tricky one the first time you encounter it. Notice how we have an isosceles triangle, two sides with the same length. So the angles across from each other are also the same. So if this is 50, this corner down here is also 50. Now I could find the upper corner, but I'm gonna tell you it's not gonna do us any good in this question. But if we wanted to, remember there's 180 degrees in a triangle. Sometimes it will help, right? And this one it's not. 180 minus 50 minus 50. What are you left with up here? That's gonna give you 80. Now it's not gonna help us with much, right? But there you go. Now some people go, oh, but this is a 90 degree angle. We can't assume that. There's no box drawn in the corner to tell us. So we can't assume it's a 90 plus. Look at 80 plus 30, that doesn't make 90. All right, but what we can do is that half circle rule. Remember, this is gonna help you a ton, okay? So the two sides of that half circle have to make 180. So what's 180 minus 50? That gives you 130 degrees. So 130 on this side. And then how are we gonna solve for X? Well, we got another triangle, right? And inside a triangle, there's 180 degrees. We've got one, two, three angles. So go what's 180 minus 130? minus 30 and what do we end up with is 20 degrees right so there you go x is 20. so again just start filling out using the rules you know have them write them down hopefully you took notes on it write them down and have them out in front of you while you do these okay all right now the next one there's a lot of different things i could find here right i could do okay if this is 120 across from that's also 120 right if this is 80 across from that's also 80. all right i could also use my half circle rule remember half circle 180 minus 80 well this is 100 and guess what that's across from that so that's also 100 right 120 well what's 180 minus 120 60 across from that also 60 so see how I can just start filling in angles right now not all these angles were needed to solve this question what we really need is look there's a triangle here right with three sides so there's shapes within shapes okay so inside this triangle we have one two three corners so inside a triangle we go 180 for the interior angles minus the 80 degrees in one corner minus the 60 in the other we got 140 180 minus 140 is 40 so this corner here is 40 degrees now what's X gonna be X is directly across from that right so X is also 40 degrees opposite angles are equal then the supplementary angle the half circle rule right 180 minus 40 that's 140 so that half circle rule you will find you can use it in like I'm not exaggerating like it like most of the questions you do but the problem is it's not drawn in right I so far in one two three and four I could have used it in all of them right but there's no half circle drawn in for you that's where people get stuck all right let's just check out four more for this lesson okay or six more I lied all right <laughs> um, here we go all right so next one we have a quadrilateral right it has one 
two, three, four sides, a four-sided polygon, right? And inside that is 360 degrees. So I'm just going to go, well, what's 360? Minus 130, minus 40, minus 120, right? So let's subtract those. So minus 130, minus 120, that's 250, minus, two, minus 40, sorry. All together, what does that give me? 290, 360, that gives me 70 degrees. So the missing corner is 70 degrees. Now, that's not what X is. X is outside, so we have to use that half circle rule again, right? The most important rule out of all these. What's 180 minus 70, right? Half circle is 180 minus 70. What do you get? 110 degrees for X. So I really wanted to do these examples with you because this is where people really get stumped. All right, check out the next one. We got another quadrilateral, four sides, right? People have a lot of trouble with this one because it's, um, look, it says 3x in this corner, 2x in this corner, x in this corner, 4x in that corner. Well, what does that mean, right? Well, let's think about this. What do these four sides all have to make? 360 degrees, right? So in other words, x, this corner, plus 2x, that corner, plus 3x, plus 4x. What do they all have to add to make? They all have to match add to make 360. Well, what's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4? I think that gives us 10x, right? Yep, 10x equals 360. Divide both sides by 10, and what is x? x is 36 degrees. So that's what x is. Now, this question doesn't go quite as, go any farther, but what if I needed to know what these angles were, right? What if I want to know what each of these are? Well, this corner would be x, so it's 36. This corner is 2x, so it's 2 times 36, right? Which would give me 72 degrees. And then so on and so forth. This would be 3 times 36. You know, you can find that out. 4 times 36, you can figure that out, right? And all together, those angles would all add to make 360. All right, let's keep rolling down the page here. All right, next one, number 7. This one's kind of similar to this one up here, number 2. Right? Look, it's two triangles that are attached, right? That's all number seven is, is two triangles attached again. So these two triangles are attached. So 180 inside every triangle, right? So you just go, well, what's 180? Minus 105, minus 30. So that's 180 minus 45, 145, right? Which gives us 35 degrees left over. So 35 for this corner. Opposite angles are equal. So this is also 35 degrees. Right now, I don't need it, but I could do my half circle rule here. And what's 180 minus 35? That's 145, right? Across from it's 145. Don't need those angles. I'm just pointing it out. All right, and we got another triangle with one, two, three corners, right? Well, don't forget this corner is 90 degrees. That's why that box is there. So how are we going to figure out x's? 180 degrees in every triangle, minus 90, minus 35. So what does that give us? 55 degrees, I think, for x. There you go. All right, number eight. Number eight's really similar to number six above, right? It's a little extra algebra in it. These two angles, what do they have to make? That's a quarter of a circle there, right? Because if this is 90, right, this makes a half circle. So the other side must be 90, right? So it's 90 degrees. So 2a plus 3a equals 90. Well, 2a plus 3a is 5a. And then divide both sides by 5. And what do we get? I think uh, 18. All right. Go. So there you go. That's what A is. A is 18. Now, if I needed to know what either of these angles were specifically, this angle right here is 2 times 18, right? So 2 times 18 is 36. And this angle here is 3 times 18. And 3 times 18 is 54 degrees, right? And those two angles add to make 90 degrees. So there you go. All right, let's wrap it up with these final two. Um, this one is where we can use the windmill, right? So if we want to use the shortcut, the windmill says, these outside angles always add to make 360. So all I got to do is go, all right, cool. What's 360 minus 75 minus 130, right? Subtract those from 360 and we end up with 155. Now I said when we are learning that windmill rule, you don't need this rule. Like you don't have to have it to solve. So how else could I solve? Well, I could do my half circle rule here, right? Half circle, half circle. So 180 is, makes a half circle, 180 minus 30, the side would be 50. And then 180 minus 75, this would be 105, right? And then to find the third angle inside here, right? Well, that's a, that's a triangle, which has 180. So take 180 minus 105 minus 50. So that's 180 minus 155, 
which gives me what 25 degrees left yep there you go and then I could do the half circle here and go well what's 180 minus 25 and I get 155 so I can still find it without knowing that rule that's why I said that windmill rule it's it's a shortcut for sure but you can solve anything without it all right the last one this one really stumps people on a quiz and test notice how we have an equilateral triangle that's what these little hash marks mean that these are the same length so each of these angles are the same so they're all 60 degrees in an equilateral triangle because there's 180 in a triangle divided equally between three angles all right do your supplementary angle rule, which is a half circle, and go what's 180 minus 60, right? 180 minus 60 is 120. There we go. And then finally, we're just inside another triangle, right? With one, two, three corners. So that final triangle, what's 180 minus 120 minus 30? What are we left with? That's 50, so we're left with 30 degrees for X. And again, it's not drawn accurately, so don't trust your eyes. You need to trust your math on these, okay? All right, so that's the end of this lesson. Give the homework a try, and thanks.